Gregor Artero here with the Prometheus Initiative. So it's been a while. I was on the road. We left Sedona. It took us three weeks to get back. Got back about a week ago. It's been lovely um, after being gone for nine months. Um, and now I can really bunker down and doing this research. I have like a full workshop to work with and tools. And I'm going to have some inflow of cash plus a possible investor, aka my brother, who's going to sit down and make a business plan with me. He actually moved to Manhattan a couple of days ago. He's, uh, you could say, in contact with a lot of the rich elite in the New York metropolitan area. And uh, hopefully that will manifest something interestingly. And uh, there's been some cool developments in theory and what I'm doing for a, a device. Um, the first off is the concept of the basic, and this is sort of an idea I'm actually throwing out there to see if what you guys might think, how it resonates with you, is the concept that a black hole is a vortex and a white hole is a sphere, and that a vortex or a double black hole is the inverse of a sphere. And this relates to the Seam Hermine's model. He has a motion graphic on his website if you see it, the double black hole. And here's a basic drawing of this. And this represents the proton of a atom. And a proton's made of three quarks, and so you have a negatively charged, I think, down quark, which is negative one third and two positive charge quarks, up quarks, which are positive two-thirds, which comes up to one positive charge hole. And so the idea is to replicate this. I'm going to be building this little um, device, probably out of aluminum, maybe using an organite core. Um, we'll see. I could just do something diametic, diametic for the core, and then wrapping it in aluminum. Um, and uh, the idea being is the center sphere is going to be negatively charged while the two um, uh, vortexes, the vortex geometries on the outside are going to be positively charged We're using the distilled water as a dielectric. And the idea hopefully is to put this in nucleus inside the rotating coil. To show this will be probably the more practical design for the nucleus. Um, and this vortex over here is like the true, you know, vortex, the inverted sphere. Well, this more represents a wave function, and so that might be a specific type of wave I'm going to be structuring, which is, has an important use. And so how that would work is the dielectric would be polarized in the opposite direction, and it's going to want to push against the positively charged vortex geometry, except you can't go into the geometry because it's a solid mass. And so it's going to, um, in theory, rotate counterclockwise around the around the uh, the, the the capacitor the uh, positively charged capacitor and the and if you can set it up so it's as frictionless as possible in the water the um, two positively charged um, vortexes are going to start to rotate around the sphere and so this in itself is technically perpetual motion this is based off Townsend Brown's work, but we're going to make it much, much, much more efficient in trying to replicate the structure of this. And so that's an experiment I'm going to be trying um, uh, s eventually. Um, however, I need a lot of voltage to start playing around with these things. Um, and the idea is to put that into this, and we're making a double capacitor. So this will be negatively charged. And what will happen is when that starts to rotate around the inside in this, the um, the electrons are going to want to stay on the inner core of this uh, coil. However, because when it starts rotating, the um, electrons are going to have to jump um, to the next ring. And so it's going to actually cause the capacitance or the positive charge is going to cause the electrons to move through the coil, which is basically how an atom works. And uh, so there's that concept. The other concept is how this being a black hole generator. And this is something uh, Jamie Burtuff discovered in that running current through it, it has only a north pole and no south pole. However, I think when he was doing that in that YouTube video with Mark Rowan and Seam Hermine, really cool vid, the three collaborating, um, he was running current one direction. He also did an experiment, and this was, he didn't share this out, so I'm wondering, is he ran current both directions to make an audio speaker when putting a magnet in? Um, now, if you run current in both directions opposing each other and 
uh, will have a double north pole, which means it's a double black hole, which relates to some of the geometry Nassim Harriman has been working on, and he has a motion graphic on his website. Now, um, that can also go to another idea in terms of how to build another coil, which I'm planning on doing, is taking this basically and cutting it in half, and wrapping half a toroid and taking the two toroids and sticking them together, and you'd have one circuit on each toroid, maybe two circuits, who knows. Um, I'd probably do one on each to start out. And then you put it together, and so you'd have a double black hole and the white hole getting thrown out. Um, and so that's something I'm going to also be building. Uh, and I got a lot of aluminum wire to work with and a lot of magnet wire coming. So I got a lot of materials. I could just use some bismuth and maybe some mercury. That'd be fun to play with and see what happens. Uh, otherwise, I think that's it at the most part. Um, uh, hopefully I will discuss the some of the business plans that are coming up and what hopes what will hopefully manifest from there. I have also talked with one of my professors at USM, the school I go to. I haven't gone for a year, but I'm going back. Um, I'm actually going to be working on archaeological dig this summer. Woohoo! And uh, my dad's also a professor there. Anyways, if you want to get me in contact with the physics department, and who knows what can manifest with my physics department if I actually have some interesting experimental results. Um, I do have my little human body voltage demonstration, which is an anomaly in itself, um, and should get their interest. So hopefully I will have some results in about 10 days from now to start showing you guys um, once I have a fully functioning transformer. I also ordered a bunch of diodes so I can make my own um, rectifier, convert AC to DC, and inhale like really high voltage. So I'm pretty much doing everything from the bare bones up and uh, yeah, really cool stuff. So maybe you guys can throw some ideas out there, what you think about the whole sphere white hole, black hole vortex, and uh, yeah, keep watching. Adios. So I forgot to mention um, what the black hole is, is big news about in generating a black hole, is if we can generate an actual black hole, technically it's absorbing energy in. Um, and especially if it's absorbing more energy in than it's putting out. And this has been shown with free energy devices, such as with John Searle, it gets ice cold when it's actually working, um, which means absorbing the radiant energy around, which means a really efficient way to cool um, versus the uh, common usage of evaporative cooling, which they use to, um, for air conditioning and also for uh, getting things to superconduct. And that's our true goal is to get this to superconduct because this is aluminum wire. And aluminum is the most conductive um, material at room temperature that superconducts. Copper, gold, and silver do not superconduct. Otherwise, those are the three most conductive materials at room temperature. And uh, we need to get to one Kelvin. So, if you can keep absorbing the energy in, but at the same time shield it from the outside, and actually probably the best thing to shield it with is bismuth, um, is the second uh, least thermoconductive element. First is mercury. So I mentioned I also want to get my hands on that. So you can actually shield this thing in uh, bismuth, and instead of using distilled water, you could use mercury, um, or using water and mercury um, in a double layer system. And it sort of makes a, it will absorb all the energy out because it's so little um, thermal conductive. It sort of creates a insulating wall thermally and allows the coil itself in the center to keep cooling down. If you get to one Kelvin, this guy superconducts, and then we are in business. So yeah, there's an idea.